Okay, great. I'll try to watch what I say. <laughs> I do have some announcements before I go into our myth. Okay, go ahead. Because it is a... Go ahead and start your announcement. Oh, it's time already, isn't it? Yes. Okay. All right, let me know when you're ready for me. You're ready. Ah, welcome everyone. Can everyone read my lips? Yep. The reason I paint them. <laughs> Happy New Year. Um, uh, we could talk separately about resolutions if there's time at the end. Let me change this so you can see a little more of my body language because I believe in body language too. We have uh, with our chapter and with anyone out there that is interested in hearing, we have some really new things that have uh, occurred since last meeting online. And I wanna just quickly go over those if they're important to you. I got almost all of them from the national website, but I do think I wanna make people aware of them. First one that is most recent is um, service dog rules have changed. The US Department of Transportation has changed them. Um, there's a comfort dog category that has changed quite a bit. So check with uh, the national website if you're interested under the news. <clears throat> Second one is Amtrak has now allocated $2.25 million for mobility and hearing access to their stations and in their, in their uh, operations. There was one lawsuit, at least one lawsuit that had to do with not being able to hear and um, that was among other things that had to do with the ADA. So that has now been agreed upon and they are going to modify a whole bunch of their locations, two and a quarter million they're putting into that. And I'm glad that that happened because one of the fears that I always had using a train um, was what if they make an announcement I can't hear and separate from being in air travel, when you worry about that, if you're on a train and you're, you know, rolling down the track, then that's enough noise for you. It muffles out a lot of things. Um, the third one is interesting, and it's something I hadn't thought of before, and that had to do with prisons. And there are now required relay services, captioning, equal access for prisoners and their visitors as they go. Uh, connect through various media that is allowed. The fourth thing, and I actually printed this out, um, that I thought was important and is right now happening, is um, HLAA along with six other organizations was requested and participated in a um, accessibility priority discussion for Biden's transition team. And um, basically it encourages the transition team with the FCC to prioritize accessibility in agency leadership among all the various government agencies. To relocate the disability rights office, it's now going to be called the Office of Civil Rights. So that's new. They will address video conferencing accessibility problems in response to the pandemic. That's come out a lot more since this past year, obviously. You're going to see them getting real-time text transitions back on track, whatever that means to all of this. They're going to bolster video programming accessibility, which is, I think, a good tool that they should use. And they're going to improve the accessibility of wireless handsets. And that is something that I would have thought was already in action and didn't need to be discussed, but that's one of the items on their main um, transition team communication access situational things. And, and something else that is on the national website that is not necessarily in the new news, but 
I think it is important, and I actually signed up last night on this, Mayo Clinic Connect. And there is a hearing group. And there are very interesting questions, very interesting topics. It's very easy to sign up to just participate as much or as little as you want to. You can change your participation level at any time. Um, but you can sign up for pushes to come to you about hearing that the mail comes across or is asked or whatever. And I, I think it's another tool for us to really pay attention to because as you know, Mayo Clinic is one of the ones really respected in our country, uh, particularly since they're in more than one location that um, are on the forefront of both scientific, medical, um, even people category that relate to hearing. So I wanted to pass that along. I think that's probably the most important one that I want to tell you about. Um, I, I do have a couple other things I want to mention real quick. In the newspaper yesterday was an article, and I don't know if you can see this or not. It's about melatonin. And some people cannot take it because it interferes with their medicine. Um, but this was very interesting to me. And there are so many people out there that are diabetic or black um, and have other needs as well. And the things that I found most interesting was the study reveals a 52% reduced likelihood of testing positive for the virus for black patients following melatonin usage. And that doesn't mean you're gonna get tested wrong. That means that once you've had it, this helps erase that, I believe the way I take that. Patients with diabetes, and there are a growing number, especially among baby boomers like me, people that have that issue, also benefited from reduced risk of getting the virus. The two things they did not find that it benefited much was someone with asthma or uh, someone with high blood pressure. It doesn't really seem to affect that. And that's fairly new in the study, so they're still going to do ongoing for that. The end paragraph says melatonin can control and reverse this innate immune response suggesting it may also have beneficial effects in preventing or reducing the inflammation overload, which is the big grab thing that this virus seems to knock people out with, and thus lowering people's chances of developing COVID-19 and dying. And that last paragraph really hit me and I said, I gotta tell people about this. So I wanted to make sure that you knew because I imagine everyone out there, like we say, one out of five or six people have hearing loss. Probably the amount of people with diabetes is even greater than that. So pass that along. And the number of people that are black, of course, are great. So pass that along. That was in the newspaper uh, yesterday. And it was a um, Washington Bureau article through the Tribune News Service, in case you want to look it up. Then I have a little humor and then we're gonna get started. <clears throat> um, it's sort of like humor. This came on um, something that I follow with my apps on my smartphone. And uh, you know how we like to use abbreviations for things? And I have several that I use on my smartphone. My, my contacts know what that means. Um, and I do, uh, the most common one I use is NRN. And if you haven't already heard about maybe what that means, no reply necessary. People will come back and you're back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and you're tying up all this time. You could be volunteering somewhere because you simply want to be nice and reply. So if you put NRN at the end, maybe I'm starting this. I don't know. It just came to me and I use it. <laughs> I don't need a reply if I put that at the end. So. Think about that one. 
Um, the two that I thought were interesting, one is SNAFU. I've heard that word before, but I never actually knew what the initials might stand for. The situation normal all fouled up. That's what that one means. S-N-A-F-U. Situation <laughs> normal all fouled up. And FUBAR, F-U-B-A-R. Fouled up beyond all recognition. And that came as describing 2020 from somewhere. <laughs> so I thought that was a little humor I'd share with you for today. And um, when I teach lip reading, I don't teach bad words. So if you heard my story about my dad and Johnny Carson at some point in time, you know about that. So as everybody got their coffee, they're awake, they're sitting up straight. I'm gonna talk from my diaphragm is there anyone out there that's not understanding what I'm saying? Raise your hand. Okay. I know I had several people reply that they would be logging in and I'm not seeing them on the film, Debbie. Um, yeah, I'm checking and that's all we have so far. Nobody's in the waiting room or anything. Okay. So I don't know if the- One of my, one of my people was looking for a passcode. Do you have a passcode I can give her to log on? It doesn't need a passcode, but if they need it, the passcode is five two five three two seven. Five two five three two seven. Five two five three two five seven. How huh? five two Five three two five. Yeah, I'll write it in the chat. Okay. 